there. Uh, God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. Memorial Day weekend. Here it is, 2024. I hope you all are enjoying a, a beautiful, safe weekend. I know uh, just throughout the United States, there's several, several areas, particularly here in the state of Texas, that have endured uh, just very destructive weather. Uh, so we lift up prayer uh, for the people that have been uh, that have been affected by this. In, in Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you for your your, your word and, and your presence, your wisdom, to guide all the people that are involved in what's taking place uh, in the in in the tornadoes and the weather activity that's been happening, and we continue to pray. I continue to pray for the people uh, who who are, who are alive today, Lord, uh, n not just there, but throughout the throughout the entire world, because I know we're continuing to enter into these end times, continuing to go through these last days, and that uh, they need all the help that they can get. Um, please open up the, their hearts, uh, their minds. Um, their understanding to receive you to receive your spirit in these times but thank you for the grace that you've set um forth in, in this time as well to save the people who desperately need your salvation in jesus mighty name amen and amen all right i i want to i you know yes there are headlines there's a ton of headlines um but i want to get into the word of the lord if it's okay i'd like to start off uh, with a portion of scripture found in the gospel of john it is found in um uh, John chapter 10, uh, I, I'm going to read it in context and then I want to emphasize a particular portion, okay? So let's let's do this together. If you have your Bible, you're free to join me. Uh, if you're in the middle of something or maybe you're driving or if you're just not in a position to grab it, uh, as long as you have an ear to hear what, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through His Word, that is the, the most important thing right now. So give heed to God's Word. Amen? Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, starting in verse 1, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Listen, let's take a moment to really emphasize the word voice. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. There it is again. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Let's continue. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. As a father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they will hear my voice. There it is again. And they will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Therefore there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings, and many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? While others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon. 
Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Now it was a feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple, in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. But Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice. Everyone say, my voice. This is the Lord's voice. Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he has a voice. He says here, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Praise be to God. Why the emphasis on the word voice? Because God's voice is different than anyone else's. God's voice is his spirit. Okay? Now, we could hear many voices in our day and time, in our, in our day and age. We're, we're, you know, in the times that we're living in, there are voices all over. Voices on television and radio. The voice of your friends, your family members, your co-workers, the church. Everyone has a voice. Everyone has a an opinion. Everyone has a view. Everyone has a feeling. That's, you know, for, for you know, let, 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 let me make it clear. The dictionary, Oxford Language Dictionary, dis defines the word voice as the following. The sound produced in a person's larynx and uttered through the mouth as speech or song. Now, I like that definition of the word voice. Another definition, the ability to speak or sing. Uh, another definition is known as a particular opinion or attitude expressed, like the right to express an opinion. But for the sake of today's portion of this broadcast, I want to use the voice definition of the phonetics, the, the sound uttered with resonance of the vocal cords, uh, particularly uh, the sound produced in a person's larynx uttered through the mouth. The, the word voice and the word word if you will, are two different meanings, two different understandings. Now, of course, they go hand in hand with each other. In order to speak, in order to speak words, you have to have a voice. You have to be able to speak uh, through your larynx and utter through the mouth, uh, and, and now you're able to speak words. But the voice, you could, you know, people could speak words all the time, and it happens. Many of us hear many people speak. We speak. And it really comes down to how they're speaking. I can't even say it goes down to the words that they're speaking because people say, well, you know, I, I may not have a good voice, but at least I speak the word of the Lord. At least I speak the word of God. At least I'm able to, you know, declare scriptures. Well, yeah, many Pharisees and Sadducees are able to declare scriptures. Many unbelievers are able to declare the word of God. And yet they have no power. They're always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth to be saved. Uh, there's going to come a point, Jesus said, in 2 Thessalonians, that Satan will come forth with all miracle signs and lying wonders to deceive, if it were possible, even the very elect. And because people did not love the knowledge of the truth to be saved, they're going to be brought under this strong delusion to seal their destruction, their decision to go against God, even being willing to use his word. The word of the Lord is living and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. It does pierce to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and of marrow, and it is a discerner of man's thoughts and intents of man's hearts. But the voice is what is the power of God to make that word alive or dead. And you may say, come on, evangelist, I've never even heard of this. What do you mean that a person can declare God's word and it would have no power. God's word always has power. Yes, it does. It depends on the voice that is in that person, though. Jesus just made it very clear that my sheep hear my voice. 
The voice of a stranger they do not follow. And yet, we know in the times that we're living in, there are many people that are following the voice of strangers. They're going to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Because these people put out a false sense of power, but it's not God's power. They put out a false sense of authority, but it's not God's authority. They put out a false spirit, and it really... It really is nothing more than divination. That's why you have a lot of motivational speakers now that are in the churches. Uh, they're saying, listen, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm not here to preach or teach you. Uh, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm here to lift you up. And they utilize their, their so-called giftings as in their voice, not just in their words, but in their voice to motivate how, you know, the tone and, and their level of, 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 of how they're able to uh, make someone uh, be jarred up and excited uh, based on how uh, they, 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 they speak based on their, their voice. Uh, and, 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 and it sounds so exciting to people that, oh, just need a pick-me-up. They need that motivational kick, if you will. But that's not God, and it's very temporary. And, and I'll say, really, it's foolish. It's not of the, it doesn't go anywhere. It'll never last. I know some are still saying, well, how can you say that the word of God would have no power even if a person doesn't have the perfect voice? You're saying a person has to have the perfect voice? No, the per a person has to have a godly voice in order for the word of God to bring forth the power that's intended. How do you get a godly voice? It's by the Holy Spirit. Our voice is by the Spirit, the Spirit of a man. Let me, let me, let me clarify this with Scripture. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, the word of the Lord says, The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, For who among men knows the thoughts of, of a man except his own spirit within him, his own voice? Again, let's, let's look at this word. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except his own spirit or his own voice? Within him, so too, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God, also known as the voice of God. The Word of God, again, is living and it's powerful, but when it comes to a person who exercises, who seeks to exercise the Word of God, teach the Word of God, or even preach the Word of God, and they don't have the voice of God in them, in other words, the Spirit of God in them, it literally, as Jesus said in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verse 13, it makes the Word of God of no effect at all. It, it, it makes, please understand, Jesus said this in the Gospel of Mark. You make the Word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. You're using my Word, which is living and powerful, is sharper than any two edged sword. It created the heavens and the earth. It, it parted the sea for the, you know, you know, for Moses. And it brought me here on the scene in, in the fullness of time. And yet you make the word of God of no effect through your, to, through, your, through your tradition. You seek to use my powerful word in a dulled spirit. A spirit that has not been born again. A spirit that has, has, is not by my Holy Spirit. But it, you, you, you seek... You make the word of God of no effect through your spirit that is human and has not been saved. The spirit of a man rather than the spirit of God. You make the word of God of no effect through the voice of the man. I should say through, through your own voice, through your own spirit. By your own spirit within you. A mere, a mere man spirit. And when I say man, I'm not talking about males, he's. I'm talking about human spirit. Mankind. We're made in the image of the Lord. So when I say man, I'm not referring to, to the male occupation, if you will. It's not just to men. I'm talking about to all mankind. You make the word of God of no effect because you're seeking to speak and preach and teach my word. You're speaking to... You know, you're seeking to stand on, uh, you know, and, and be authoritative. And that's why the devils don't flee. The demons don't flee. They're looking at you. They're mocking you. They're making fun. You have no power in your life because you're doing it in your own traditional way. You refuse to surrender your life to me. You refuse to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you say, oh, but I've been water baptized. That should be more than enough. I don't want to start this tongue business. I don't want to start speaking because you've heard a lot of 
a lot of uh, uh, you know rumors that if you start speaking in tongues, you're gonna look crazy. It's not gonna be a bunch of jargon and maybe blasphemy. How dare anybody say that? That's a tactic of the devil to stop you from receiving the promise of the Father that was only sent. He w it was only possible for him to be sent through the through the sacrifice that Jesus brought for us at the crucifixion at the cross at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. The, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it, it, he would not have been able to be poured out unless Jesus did what he did at the cross and finished the work perfectly. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is confirmation of the finished work, the perfect finished sacrificial work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the cross at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And that same Spirit is alive today that same spirit desires to make you born again and to fill you and baptize you with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of a now spiritual language to now when to now receive the Word of God to truly be able to study the Word of God and now when need be and it will be needed to speak the Word of God and now when you speak the word of God in the power of God, in the voice of God, because now your voice, your, 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 you know, your, your natural man, if you will, that, that, that old, you know, the spirit that was not born again has now been brought alive, has now been sealed for the day of redemption, has now become born again by the Holy Spirit. Now you have the voice of God in you to be able to speak the word of God, both Rhema and Logos, and now everything changes in your life. You're not the person you used to be. You're not stuck like you've been for so long. People don't even recognize you. They see you. You look the same, but you don't sound the same. Something has changed about you. And they may, they may not get it. They say, well, no, no, you know, Pam looks the same. You know, Bob looks the same. They, they, don't, they haven't changed on the outside, but something has happened to where they've changed and it's coming out from the inside out. It's making itself known. And it's, it could be intimidating. This is why people lose, quote unquote, they lose so many friends and family when they give their life to Jesus, when they become born again, when the Spirit of God, which is the voice of God, now lives in them, makes them one, makes them righteous in the Lord Jesus, sealed for the day of redemption, makes them born again, because they get afraid. And it's not afraid like... Um, like uh, it is, it is uh, maybe I have to say it, it they, they get afraid and they get intimidated and some of them get offended because they have a different spirit leading them for so long. They have that little ancestral spirit. I know a lot of people like to say, well, I'm going back to the ancestors and I like to have the ancestral spirit leading me. I don't want no ancestral spirit. Oh, but now, you know, you're born again evangelist. So maybe your ancestral spirit is Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and Sarah and, and, and all the people of the Bible. Yes, all the people of the Bible, if they were truly of the Bible, they're led by one voice one spirit and one word and that's by God himself it is not by uh, the ancestral spirit of, of this and that and, and, and the other person no 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 it's the word of God which is living and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword and for the power of God to be uh, the authority in your life you must have the voice of the Lord in your spirit man you must be born again Please understand what the Lord is saying. Please understand the word of the Lord tonight because it is, it's, it's important. The hour is coming and now is, Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 5, verse 25, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will what? Live. Let's repeat that again. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here. It's not in the future. It's here right now, the Lord says. Why does Jesus say that? He says, because I am that I am. I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm here already. I, I am ever present. I'm a very present help in a time of trouble. I am the one who was and who is and who is to come. I am the Almighty, he says in the book of Revelation chapter 1. Truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here. Where the dead, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. So I almost have to say, if you're dead, and if you're hearing the sound of the Son of God's voice, live in the name of Jesus. Get saved. Be ye saved. Be ye born. Cry out, in the cry out to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will save you. 
Stop looking to other people to save you. Well, I'm just going to go uh, through the ancestral plane and I'm going to choose one person one day and they're going to be my, my go-to. They're going to be my intercessor before God and they're going to be able to speak in the highest of tongues and, and be still yet the lowest of men or women, you know, whatever. And, and they're going to be able to communicate to God my issues, my problems, my, my, my concerns, and, and they're going to be my middle person. And if this, and they got it all tricked up. Listen, we're living in the last days. A lot of stuff, there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Nothing that has been stowed away that will not be made known, the Lord says. He says, if it's been done in the darkness, it's going to be brought out into the light. And people right now, there's a lot of things that are being exposed that are, have been in traditional. It's been a tradition in, in families and it's been also cooped up and hidden in the secret places. We want to make sure we don't disturb the spirits and get them all mad. Get them mad. Round them up. If they're a human spirit, they may need to be saved. I mean, if you could preach and before a congregation, surely you could preach to, to you know, to the, you know, to your own walls in your own home. You never know if you're talking about the so-called ancestral plan. Listen, I'm just making a point. And I'm making a very clear point according to what it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 25. We cannot hold on to the doctrines of God. To the doctrines of God and still hold on to the doctrines of man. We cannot adhere, claim to adhere, give attention, be a student, a disciple, a follower, a faithful follower in the Lord Jesus Christ and attain and still hold, hold on to and respect the doctrines of the devils. They cannot coexist. They collide. They at, are at, they are at enmity with each other. And if you try to do both, if you think you're doing both and you're being successful at it, you are deceiving yourself. You need to expose it for what it is, renounce the one so that you can cling to the other. Because if you don't, we have entered a time where Jesus makes it very clear that if you seek to love both and declare both to be God in your life, you will hate the one and love the other and you will despise the one and cling to the other. And you think, oh, well, then if that's the case and God will just come out at the end and he'll prove himself to be God. No, he won't. Because the mere fact that you have the other thing at, at, at an equal with God, the other thing wins. Do you understand? God will not share his glory with another. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows to the flesh that he will reap, whatever man sows to the spirit that he will reap. God is not interested and you're trying to lay out, uh, what's it called? Uh, you, you know, you're trying to lay out stones for him or you're trying to lay out a mantle for him. You're trying to lay out uh, um, all these rocks for him so that he could prove himself. Well, Lord, you know, I don't want to upset, you know, you know, the tradition of my fathers. You know how it goes back into the deep, dark places of recession and how it goes back into the deep, dark places of ancestral planes. And everybody ha had to keep on this tradition. And in the spirit, it went down from one generation to another, to one child, to another, to one kid, to another. And we just, we, you know, we can't break it because if we break it, we're breaking our link. And we all had a commitment and a covenant. And, and it's witchery. It's, it's, it's witchcraft. It, it's, it's, satanic it's ungodly it's not of God so I'm trying to claim it as if it's, it, as if it's got to be kept oh it's got to be sensitive let's not again disturb the spirits lest they come and punish us brother please please what punishment I, I'm talking there's a greater punishment than whatever you think your ancestors already have lied to you about they are in punishment if they were not saved they're it's the devil behind that person uh, the, you know, it, it, it's the devil behind that person's spirit, behind their old cloak, behind their old mantle. They're still trying to come and visit you in the day, time and hours that we're living in, giving you the impression that you got to hold on to this. Hold on to the idol. Don't make it drop. Hold on. Hold on. Make sure it doesn't fall. We got to make sure we got to light it at the perfect time and, and, and cross ourselves. No, I'm not interested. No, no person, no, 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 no thing in existence or non-existent is interested. The person is crying out from hell because every time the tradition continues, that person gets, they're, they're being tormented. It's a trick of the devil. The devil's real. Ooh, you, but he's defeated. The devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking him, whom he may devour. Ooh, ooh, but he's under my feet. He's been defeated by the blood of Jesus. It ain't hard. You, you, you have to decide what fear you're going to be in. Oh, no, here we go. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to do headlines tonight right now. This is important. You have to decide what fear you're going to be in tonight. 
And when you may say, come on, well, what are you talking about, evangelist? The last thing I want to do is be in fear. I don't want to be in fear about nothing. I'm trying to break this thing off of me. This thing, okay, yes, you, I admit this thing has kept me in a bondage. It's kept me in a bondage of fear that I've had to keep these traditions of men, traditions of my ancestors. I've had to keep all this. And, and yes, it's kept me in this. But now you're telling me I got to pick a fear. Yes, you do. You got to pick a fear. Because right now, if you're in a bondage of fear in whatever ancestral nonsense that was proclaimed because some kind of satanic panic pact that was made when you were young and your mom was young and your daddy was young and then your great granddaddy was young and it kept on going since forever and now it's up to you and now we're living in the last days and the devil's trying to make a claim on you and you're saying no 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 and he's saying yes 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 and God's saying let me know when everybody's done son where are you well, you know daughter where are you and they're saying oh no I'm afraid I'm afraid and so they try to tap someone in to try to do like uh what do you call it like in wrestling like a double team match or whatever and they try to tap someone in and they're getting their butts kicked they don't know what the heck's going on and you're thinking okay well gosh I think I guess the evil's going to win this must be God. God, and you're being deceived, you have to choose what fear to be in. Let me explain. We know that there is a fear that's ungodly. The Bible calls it a spirit of fear. We also know that God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Where does the power, love, and a sound mind come from? It comes from God, not just God, but the spirit of God. So you're talking about a spirit of fear. What can conquer a spirit of fear is the spirit of God. And the spirit of God, which is what? Power, love, and of a sound mind. Where you say, well, it's not just a spirit of fear, evangelists. It's a, it's a kingdom of darkness. Okay, well, you know, what's the problem with the kingdom of darkness? Well, they're the ones that got me in a spirit of fear, and now I'm in bondage to that with the ancestrals that's been doing this, and I've been going, and I can't follow the voice of God, and I'm trying to work in power and speak in power, but they always stop me. They always have, like, a limitation on me. They already have a claim on me, and I've been trying to break this power because now, you know, it's not just a spirit of fear, but it's a kingdom of darkness. All right, well, how far do you want to go? The kingdom of darkness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God says that we shall be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. The Bible, Jesus himself said in the last days that kingdom will rise up against kingdom. And he's not just talking about nations. He said, listen, let me let me clarify this for everybody. Let me make sure I'm emphasizing this. Kingdom, just it, it, it doesn't just represent nation because I said kingdom will rise up against kingdom and nation will rise up against nation. The kingdom that, that will rise up against kingdom also represents especially, specifically the spiritual kingdom. Kingdom will rise up, up, uh, up against kingdom. So if the kingdom of darkness has had you in this stronghold of bondage, well, the kingdom of God's spirit is greater. What's the kingdom of God? What's the kingdom of God's spirit? Is, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit? That's the kingdom of God. It all resonates to the whole. It all, listen, each and every time it will go back to the Holy Spirit. Each and every time. Stop dismissing the spirit of God. But I got water baptized. That should be good enough. Why do I got to get this, this you know, baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because if you don't, you're going to get your butts kicked in the spirit and in the natural. You're not going to make it without God's Holy Spirit. Jesus said the flesh profits nothing. It's my words that bring God's spirit. It's my words that are your power. And it only comes by the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, the, book, the, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Then God said, I'm sorry, I'm missing a step. Please forgive me, Lord Jesus. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God couldn't even say a word, and he's God. God couldn't even say a word, and he's the creator. Do you understand? He's the king. He's the, he's the master of everything. But he couldn't even say a word until what? The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And as soon as he did that, as soon as the Spirit of God came on the scene and hovered perfectly where he needed to, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. This ain't hard. People are making it hard. And there's a lot of blasphemy taking place just to keep the ancestral thing, the planes going on from one generation to another so that we don't break links and, and we don't break the, the, the chain and we don't break, uh, you know, all this. And we got to make sure that we're doing our hoopla movements in, in, the, in the natural and in, 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 in the secret places and in the dark, in, in the secret places and in the light. Looking like silly people out there. People looking at you saying, why are you crossing yourself? What's going on? What, you know, why are you doing all this movement all of nowhere? And I said, well, I got to keep up the ancestral plane. You don't get it. You don't get it. I'm just, you know, I'm just spiritual like that. Stop! 
be of the kingdom. You need to choose a fear. Let me go back. What fear am I talking about? We know, again, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We recognize, we understand right now that the power of love and sound mind only comes from the Holy Spirit. Just, the spirit of fear comes from the kingdom of darkness. So if it's kingdom rising up against kingdom, the, spirit, you know, the kingdom of darkness rises up against the kingdom of God, the kingdom, the, and the kingdom of God uh, you know, raises up a standard against it. Not an issue. But you still have to choose what fear you're going to pick. And you may say again, Anita, what do you mean by fear? Well, it's either going to be the spirit of fear or the fear of the Lord. The spirit of fear will keep you in bondage. The spirit of fear will have you uh, continuing to do these hoopla, uh, magical, nonsensical movement and tricks to, for the sake of not breaking any linkage or change going on for your ancestral plane while you're trying to declare God and preach God and teach God. And, you're, and you don't understand why your words have no power, or you're still in bondage to the same thing that your grandma was in bondage to that you believe that you have broken because you spoke the word of God over it but because you're trying to still hold on to the two you, you have you're working at not even a I can't even say in a half power if you're working in a half power you're working in no power and the devil's winning on this and he doesn't need to be you need to choose your fear it's either going to be the spirit of fear or the fear of the Lord when you choose the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom knowledge of the Holy One the beginning of understanding now you have power you can't be fearless now, of course, okay, I want to, I may cause controversy. Somebody say, hold on, Anita. <laughs> For years, I've been walking around fearless. I was in fear. Listen, I'm with you. I get it. I was in a spirit of fear. I was in bondage to a spirit of fear for years. And I got free from that. So technically, yes, you can be fearless in that respect. But you cannot be fearless in all respect. And what I mean by that is that in order for me to have broken from the spirit of fear that did have me in bondage for a number of years... I had to attain not just the salvation, but by the baptism of God's Holy Spirit, because of the salvation that was wrought to me at the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago, I had to attain to the fear of the Lord. God allowed me to receive the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is in Isaiah chapter 61. As part of the seven spirits of God, as is spoken of in the book of Revelation. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of might, and, and it's the spirit of God, which is part of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what keeps you secure. The fear of the Lord, in Job chapter 28 says, And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. When you truly have the fear of the Lord because you chose your fear properly, you can now renounce the evil. You can depart from that evil trend, that chain that tries to knock on you every seven years. Knock on, we got to knock on wood. Don't break a mirror. You're just suspicious like that because even though you claim to be loving God and you're serving God, you know, you got to make sure you got to keep up with the traditions of your ancestors. And that's why the word of God has no effect in your life. And you want it to. This is the day and age. This is the time right now. We're, we're beyond the last hour. You have to have God's spirit in you. You cannot do both. God is not going to share his glory with another. The fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom, and before honor comes humility. Choose your fear. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Don't be a fool anymore. Proverbs 14, 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. Get out the trap. You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord your God. It's good that I say it. It's good that you, if you have an ear to, it's good if you have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. But it's even, it, but but what you need is the voice of the Lord in you, the Holy Spirit in you, both to willing to do for His good pleasure. So, so now, if, once you hear a minister, a preacher, a teacher hearing the Word of God to you, it doesn't just feel good to hear it, but now you're able to attain it. Now you're able to receive conviction. Now you're able to, to have it be consecrated in you. Now it becomes one, it becomes part of you. you it, it links up with you. It literally, it, 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 it's, it's weaved into your spirit. It, it's weaved into you, into your spirit and your soul. And now you're not walking around like a, like a fake Christian, like a lukewarm, like you're trying to grasp uh, uh, you know, a very wet, sandy side of a, of a molten area that you're trapped in, miry clay, now you're able to grasp and solid ground meets you at your feet and lifts you up. 
Because the voice of God's spirit, the voice of the Lord is in you. The spirit of the Lord has now made his home in your in you. You're born again. And the fear of the Lord will always break the power of the spirit of fear. Always. The two cannot, the two never cohabitate. They never live together. Never. When you are in the fear of the Lord, you have power. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. Everyone say strong confidence. It, when you have a spirit of fear, you have no confidence. You have no power. You are afraid. You are weak. But when you have the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have refuge. Even your own children will be covered because you fear the Lord. Praise God, friends. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Oh, no. What do you mean greatly delights in his commandments? Now we got to follow the ten. See, that's what I don't want to talk about, this fear business. If everyone is going to lead to that, I don't want to be doing the ten commandments. I was told by a well-popular minister and preacher that we're free from the law, just like you're fearless, right? Fearless. But you got to have the pro you have, you have to choose your fear. You're, you're in bondage to a spirit of fear. Cry out to God to save you, to make you born again, to fill you with the gifts of God's Holy Spirit, to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and to bless you with the fear of the Lord. Oh, but I don't want to follow, uh, who greatly delights in his commandments of angels. I don't like that. I don't want to do his commandments because that's being in bondage now to the law. But see, if you truly fear the Lord, you would greatly delight in his commandments. And that's every counsel of God's word, including his ten. That It's not about, uh, oh, well, I, I don't want to, because if I try to stick to it, then I'll break and I'll, I'll be in sin. Stop! You've crossed the teaching. You, you've discombobulated it. You made it, you made it, you twisted it to your own destruction, probably. God forbid. God's grace is abundant. His spirit it's a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made us free from the law of sin and death. Because Jesus did what he did at the cross, satisfying the very commandments of God. That's why once you become born again, you're a partaker of God's Holy Spirit. You're a partaker of what Jesus did. Everything changes. You won't know what I'm saying until you have become born again and you've received the gift of God's salvation. God's anointed you and blessed you to receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not for a select few. It's for all who call on the name of the Lord to be saved. It's, it's, end time, it's, it's one of the biggest end time Bible prophecies. People are, listen, we have a lot of end time teachers out there. God bless them. A lot of end time eschatological, eschatological, am I saying that right? Eschatology teachers that like to talk about end time biblical prophecy. God bless them. I'm one of them. Listen, I, I do it. I've been doing it for a number of years. 14 years now. Is it over 13 or 14? I'll say 14 years now. I've been doing it. So I get it. Ton of prophecies we could talk about all day long. Very exciting, very interesting, and very concerning. Fearful, dare I say. And I will say. But one of the biggest prophecies, I, I almost have to say one of the prophecies above all prophecies with regards to the last days, is what it says in the book of Acts chapter 2. In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and dreadful or terrible day of the Lord our God. This promise is to you and to your children and to your children's children and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. Do you understand? It's not hard to receive God's gift. It's not hard. It's only hard when you have to when you think you have to still hold on to that tradition. That's what makes it hard. You're, you you love God. You say you know you you desire more of Him, but you you're afraid that if you let this thing go, it's going to kill you. It's going to attack you. It's pro, it's made a promise to you because you were part of the pact that if you. And you so callingly agreed, and you, you know, oh, I did agree, Anita. Okay, because you agreed. Okay, you got to be all serious about it. Um, you know, you're gonna, you know, they're gonna come after you. Okay, then, then you have to decide what's more important. You have to say, okay, God, even if they come after me, um, even if if they come after me and they make good on this thing that we held in generations for times past and contractual whatevers, even if they come after me, I will not deny you. Yet will I ever deny you. One day I will see you because I chose you. I still chose you. That's it. 
I don't say, it's just, it, it, but I don't want to die. Look, I, I don't know what to say. I'm just making a point. I'm not saying to die. I'm just making a point. It's got people in a bondage like that so much. And they think, for some, they think it's honorable. They say that they think it makes them honorable in the sight of their ancestors. Rather, but it, and all maybe still, you know, because they got one with God, maybe before, you know, you too, God, you, you, you know, you know, you understand. But God says, it's not your fear of God, your confidence in the integrity of your ways, your hope. If you fear me, where's your integrity in, in, in your hope when it comes to me? He who walks in his uprightness fears me, but he who is devious in his ways despises me. So you thinking that you're holding on to this stuff from generational nonsense and you're refusing the voice of the Lord, but you think that you still he's still one with you, he just understands you, you're being you're deceiving yourself. That is devious. And if you're devious like that, you really you don't love God, you despise him. And that's not God's heart towards you. It's not. God does not despise you. He's never, not one time has God ever been devious to us. Not one time. And yet we think if we are towards him, he'll understand. No, he won't. Not when he is love. So the voice of the Lord. I think we have an understanding of how important it is. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Now you'll be able to hear the words of God, because his voice is in you. The voice being the Holy Spirit of God. I can do nothing on my own, the Lord Jesus says. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. You need the voice of the Lord in you. What did I say earlier? Truly, Jesus, Jesus said, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. He's doing things in the natural and in the spirit and in realms that we know nothing about. And you'll be surprised when you see people in, in, enter into the day of judgment and you know that they died a sinner. You know that they did. They, they died as a, a, a devil. And they enter into heaven. And you're thinking, now I know that's a lie. <laughs> I saw them die in sin. How'd they make it? And God says, truly an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it will live. Listen, only God can do this. Please don't look at the Vatican. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pay my, my, um, my perdition fees. You just reminded me, Anita. Thank you. Ooh, I gotta go pay my fifty dollars. I should be, probably be speaking more in a Spanish, um, Spanish uh, um, accent. Well, I gotta, I gotta go pay. I gotta go pay my my my, my perdition fees. I, I I gotta go and make sure that Uncle Theo is good because he could still be like saved in the, in the name and eyes of God. That's not what I mean. The Vatican has nothing to do with this, friends. Perdition. I say the word perdition. It's not perdition I'm looking for. Please forgive me. Perdition is biblical. Purgatory. I knew it was a P word. Purgatory. Perdition is hell. There's no such thing as a perdition fee. But in the Catholicism, there's such a thing as purgatory fees or charges or helps. Maybe it's part of <clears throat> what they dub under the Ministry of Helps. They get mad at me when I talk about stuff like that. They do. They get so... There's an underground council, boy. I had another dream the other day. I took my kids somewhere special a couple days ago just to kind of beat the Memorial Day rush. And um, took them down to Corpus Christi to enjoy the beach. And I had a dream that, that early morning and I woke up and I shared it with my kids. I'll quickly share it with you. In the dream, I was under arrest by an underground secret church council. And it kind of reflects some of the dreams that I shared with you not too long ago, just a couple months ago. This underground secret church council was made up of a majority of different church beliefs and religions, including Christian churches, Catholic churches, uh, and other religions, all combined into this one underground secret church council. And they had arrested me in the dream, and they were going to put me to death, and I sought to fight. I had the Spirit of God upon me, and I sought to fight, but this man who was part of, he wore robes as if he was part of the Catholic church, uh, you know, Vatican or what have you, um, fought me and he grabbed my wrist to literally bring me down. And uh, he was able to overpower me at that moment. And I knew, even though I, I had the Spirit of God in me, but in his overpowering me, I knew that it was done. But not in a bad way. And I'll explain. As the dream continued, um, 
he overpowered me, and somehow, in in the midst of us fighting, he was getting the he was he was getting the best as far as over being over to take me as, as best as far as being over being able to overtake me. Excuse me, I was able to escape his his grasp in some way. I don't know how. And next thing I know, I started walking away, um, started walking towards this um, large area, and Jesus came in, and Jesus said, "You know, um, every promise, everything that you had desired, I promised that I would fulfill." Even if, and you know, he, he said, even if it turns out, not if, he didn't say the word if, please forgive me, Father. He said, I promise that I will give you, I promise that you will get to desires of your heart. And you, uh, I almost want to say the word if, so if I do, Lord, please forgive me. Even if, but he didn't say the word if. Um, you, he said, even though, or even if, or something to the effect that you're going to see it on the other side, meaning it's not going to be on, on this, in this, in, in this earth, or in this, in this system, society, or what have you. And I said, sir, yes, sir. In other words, no problem. And, and I knew what he meant by that. I knew that he, he, him saying, everything you desired, I heard, and you're going to get, but you, I can't give it to you here in this time, in this, in this society that you're living in, because people will see it. And they will literally go out of their way to snag it from you. They'll, rob, they'll seek to rob you from it. They will steal it from you. And it's not meant to be stolen. And it's not meant for you to hide it. So you're going to get it. You're going to get the promises that I saw that, that you desired. It's there for you. But it's going to be on the other side. So I had no problem with that. I said, sir, of course, yes, sir. And I continue walking. And next thing I know, my children were there. And all of them were being questioned as to whether they wanted to follow me into death. Because they were going to kill me this underground secret church council and they were questioning my children and my oldest my second oldest son I had all of my children to accept two one Elias who's a who, who 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 actually passed who who was received by the Lord as a baby shortly after he was born and my older son my firstborn was not there for whatever reason he wasn't in this part of the dream or in the dream at all but my second born was there and he's 16 and um, they started to ask my children they started to question him do you want to follow your mother because if they did they would be put to death as well and my first my 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 second born was the first to speak up he said yes i'm going to follow my mom and then secondly my sec my my third born secondly said i'm going to follow my mom then my daughter which is my only daughter she said i want to follow my dad um and for whatever reason the dad was not there at the, it, the, you know, it was, you know, the court was against me. It was not against the dad. So basically she would have lived, but it was different. It would have been the attack, the, the counsel was against me, not against the father. So she was adamant. She said, I want to be with my dad. And I knew that that was not, it wasn't, even though it was honorable, she loves her father very much. It was not, it was, uh, it wasn't a leader different in life. And she was called to be an evangelist before she was born. I shared that with many of you guys two months before I found out, <clears throat> before we were even, before I had her in any way. I was not pregnant or anything. Uh, Jesus visited me and told me out of nowhere, I say out of nowhere, I didn't expect it. <laughs> he said, your daughter is going to be an evangelist. And that shook, that shocked me. That surprised me big time. So anyway, back to the dream. Um, then my last born, Isaac, he said, I'm already with mom. And so um, suddenly there was a fight. The counselors were trying to say, no, 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 put the children with their father, put the children with their father. And I looked at Jesus, I said, sir, and I couldn't look up to him. I just looked down and this council was very serious. They were a council that Jesus was apparently very aware of. And you would think, well, why did Jesus even have it there? Why did he allow it? Stop asking silly questions like that. Let's not do that because that's a lot of these questions that we think we're asking in righteousness are of the devil. Okay, we're not to be asking anything like, well, why would God allow or why would Jesus allow? God is good. Is why would you even allow a question to even come through your mind like that unless you have something against God? You already have an angst against Him, like an offense towards Him. I wasn't offended at Him at all. I was saying, sir, yes, sir. I was in great, I was in severe, I was in great obedience before the Master, and yet this council was there as He was there, and. Um, the council was fighting on behalf of the children who wanted to go with me. They said, no, 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 they need to go with their father. They need to go with their father. She's going to be put to death. And Jesus, um, but the kids were adamant. The kids had right in that moment. And they they were in a state with me. Jesus, however, went before because they said, well, at least we have her, the daughter. And Jesus said, no, 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 I'm going to take her. And that kind of made me smile inwardly in the dream because I knew in the midst of a very serious situation that I was in at that moment, Jesus knew that he called her to be an evangelist, not them, not her father, not no one. He called her. And so he 
took right at, at that moment and I said whoa that was very intense so anyway they led me down this corridor um, to go be put to my death and and then you know shortly after I woke up um, I knew I was gonna die some oh something else happened too the, when they saw that I was not fighting this in the dream this secret church council underground church council when they saw that I wasn't afraid one of the main leaders and I almost want to say it was the main leader and I didn't see their face but they looked at me and they said you know what we'll give you another chance we'll let you go back to society we'll let you live and apparently in the dream by this part of the dream I already knew that they had done this to me before at some time in my life and I don't remember when I almost want to say when I was a child to where when they did this to me before when they when they threatened to put me to death and they were serious about it I would cry out in great fear and begging them please 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 don't I'll do whatever you want I'll do whatever you want please don't put me to death please don't put me to death and they have they were able to attain power over me as a child and in my fear to basically say okay we won't we'll put you back but basically we're gonna be under your control or we're gonna be um, we're gonna have control over you you're gonna be under our control and and I knew that in the dream that for a long time that they had control over me in my waking hours but they didn't know I got saved so they were confused. They said, okay, okay, she's not reacting the way she would before, the way she would normally before react. And so they said, we'll, we'll let you go back. I said, no, no, no. I said, I'm going to finish this one. I said, I'm going to move forward. I said, you, you want to you put me to death? Let's do it right now. I had a rebellious attitude towards their ungodliness towards me. So anyway, I wanted to share that part of the dream, which I thought was very interesting. And I, the secret church council in this dream, I've had another vision of this. That I shared with you a couple months ago on broadcast. I'll be sure to put a link to it at the end of this broadcast. But they know nothing about salvation. They know nothing. They believe that Jesus isn't the Son of God. That's why Jesus was there and they didn't recognize him. They didn't even see him. It kind of reminds me of the, the book of Daniel where Nebuchadnezzar threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. And then when, they, when he saw that they weren't burnt up, he saw a fourth man with them that looked like the Son of Man or the Son of God. That's what it was like. But in these these people, this underground secret church council, because they were claiming themselves to, to be God, they were literally claiming they had something. They had I don't know if it was it's like they had they were able to create something and had it with them for a long time. But it really is the devil, it's Satan, um, to mimic God. They had such a fear over people. They they placed a fear over so many over so many people, and so many people I knew in the dream had were under their control. Um, they 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 had for a long time, and it wasn't just individuals, but it was generations. Um, so when they when when they would encounter someone like me who were saved, they couldn't comprehend that. They didn't understand. They did not believe Jesus was the Son of God. They didn't believe in Jesus at all. They knew that God existed, but it was a God that they believed that they were um, obeying. But it was not the creator of heaven and earth. It wasn't Elohim. It was Satan. But they wouldn't say his name, Satan. They just called him God. Capital letters, G-O-D, God. But it was no Holy Spirit there at all. There was no love, no, no nothing. It was nothing but punishment and, and judgment. They were very quick to judge and to threaten to put to death and they knew they had no power over the person that put them to death, but they would go as far as causing this person to tremble, quake, cry out in fear of torment to where then they would so callingly pull back, relinquish, pull back on their judgment and say, okay, we'll let you go, but we'll be watching you. We, you know, we're, we're basically you're going to be under our control for the rest of your life. Um, and they didn't, they knew nothing about salvation. So that's, anyway, I want to share that. This is important. I believe all this is happening in, in actuality, in, in real in the times that we're living in and um, people don't think I'm not saying the church is bad of course no but if we understand what the scripture says we have to understand that we're the body of Christ our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit if there's some kind of council or underground churches um, uh, not underground churches if there's some kind of secret underground council church that's a dark church it's, a, it's, it's called the synagogue of Satan the Bible makes it very clear in the book of Revelation and if you would allow me this this time right now to read to you that portion of scripture where it says here, the persecuted church. The persecuted church. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and, cut and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, 
but you are rich, and I know the, blas the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. And when, I, and when it says here Jews, uh, you may think, well, okay, that means that some Jewish people are not true Jews or they're fake Jews. The reason why Jews is emphasized here is because the Jewish people uh, are known to be God's chosen. So the underground council church, the secret, uh, you know, the synagogue of Satan that I saw in my dream, um, you know, more than once, the most recent I just shared with you, uh, they claim to be God's chosen. They're claiming to be God, uh, God's particular prophets, his servants or whatever. I don't even know if they would use the word servant, but they're, they're claiming to be in God's service. But again, Jesus is denied, is despised by them. They don't believe in Yeshua. If in, in the dream, Yeshua, you know, Jesus was with me, but they didn't even see him. All they saw was me, and they didn't comprehend. So they tried to use the same tactic that they were very good at using before. But it didn't work this time, and I challenged them on it. And I could not fight them. I had no power to fight them. Even though the, the, the power of God was upon me, you may say, well, evangelist, the power of God was upon you. How come you couldn't just destroy them and, or, or eradicate them? Because God's power is not, I want to make sure, I'm, you know, God's power, please understand, God's spirit is in service to the kingdom of heaven. So whatever the kingdom of heaven says goes. Whatever God says, God the Father says to the spirit goes. He will obey. Uh, and he will always testify of Jesus. Um, so um, it, it's not for God's spirit to be spent on things that it, it, to him is nothing. Does that make sense? Um, when it comes to people being delivered from demons, when it comes to repentance, the kingdom of heaven is upon you, repent. When it comes to people for their salvation, the, the spirit of God is more than willing to be spent. He has purpose to be spent in that way. But when it comes to fighting a dog that's already been defeated at the cross of Calvary, let me know when everybody's done, you know. Uh, ain't no thing, you know. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a string. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, you know, it's nothing. You know, it's not, it's nothing for, you know, in, in that case, the power of God is upon me not to fight them, but to make sure that I, didn't, that I was able to overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony, not loving my life to the very death. So let's continue with this portion of scripture. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a uh, synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. That is major. To, to be a martyr for Jesus. Come on. My birth name, my middle name is Martyr. It's spelled with it's spelled M A R T I R. Martyr that you would replace the I with the Y. So it's very close. <laughs> I just found that interesting. It's funny when you look into your birth name, the things that you could find biblically related. You're like, that's telling me my my my, my life. I think you know. <laughs> anyway, um, I say all this because all this is happening is real. And you need the voice of God. You need the voice of God to lead you in your life. Now, one thing I want to add as well before I end the broadcast is that when I say the voice of the Lord, you may say, okay, evangelist, does that mean that I'm going to hear his audible voice? Does that mean I'm going to hear him speaking in my ears? Am I going to hear him speaking like voices in my head? What does that mean, the voice of the Lord? The voice of the Lord, again, is the Spirit of God. And God's Spirit is in your belly, okay? Just like your, your spirit, your spirit man is in your belly. That's what must be born again. That's why the Bible, you know, in the Bible is recorded for us where Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of life-giving water. Um, so the voice of the Lord will always speak within your spirit, man, that has been made born again. So um, it's not going to come audibly, okay? Um, it may seem audible if he's speaking to your spirit. It will resonate through your soul. The soul is made up of three 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 things okay the human soul is made up of three things number one is made of a, uh, is made up of a mind second is made up of will and thirdly is made up of emotions so when the spirit of god uh has encompassed your spirit and made you born again when the spirit of god has made you born again by what jesus did for you at the cross of calvary um the word of god will penetrate it will it will speak through your spirit and your emotions will recognize it and will do what it's supposed to do in obedience to it. Your will will do what it needs to do in obedience to the word. 
to the voice of God and your, your, your mind will do what it's meant to do in obedience to the voice of God. Um, the voice of another you do not want to follow. That's why it's very important that you um, don't waste time giving heed to deceiving spirits or doctrines of demons. Stop pledging your allegiance to doctrines of men. Making sure you're all ears when a motivational speaker comes up to your church to you know, make you feel good that week. But when it comes to the preaching of the word of God, you have no desire. That's probably because the voice of God is not in you, which is the spirit of God. You need to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. You must be born again, and you must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Holy and true is your name in all the earth. Father, I lift these precious people up to you, and I'm asking that you, that you will please bless them to receive your word right now, to receive your word, your spirit right now, to receive your spirit in fullness, Lord Jesus. Please do what only you can do. You're, you're the only one who could break a, a, a hardened heart. You're the only one who, who, who could turn the heart of stone into a heart of flesh. You're the only one who could give them eyes to see and ears to hear what you're saying, Lord Jesus. Father, I, I believe that it's your desire. I know it's your desire to help them receive, and I believe that some of them are probably they're they're afraid. They're not sure what to expect, but I know that they desire you more than their fear. They desire you more than to be stuck and to be in bondage, Lord. So, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing, we speak peace, wholeness, and restoration now, and um, we speak your your deliverance over them. And Father, I ask that by the work of Jesus Christ by the power of God's Holy Spirit, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit now, that you would break the chains of bondage over them right now, that you would cry, that you would have them cry out in salvation to you right now, that you would have them cry out in salvation to your name, that you would have them cry out in salvation and in repentance, Lord Jesus, and that in crying out, you would bless them and fill them with your Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy upon your people that you created in your image, Lord. We thank you so much. We know that the enemy has been working hard to keep these people in bondage. We know that the enemy, boy, I mean, he's really got a network. I mean, he's got, <laughs> whew, he's got stuff that's happening, but you're greater. You're, you're, it's no comparison. I don't ever want to compare you, Lord Jesus, because you're, you're, the goodness of God is, is, is so great. And uh, it's a sorrowful thing to see um, something that would try to mimic your glory and your God, you know, your goodness, Lord, and your godliness of who you are, Lord Jesus. But we, we see the foolishness of it, and we attribute it to as, as to sin. But Father, you are good. And I, I just dedicate these people, I dedicate this ministry to you, this broadcast to you, these people to you in your name, and that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. Please keep them as in the shadow of, uh, of your wings, Lord Jesus. Keep them under the shadow of your wings, and lead them from this day forward. Don't let them go to the right or to the left. The voice of a stranger, help them not to follow. If they've been in bondage to voices, Lord Jesus, that were not of yours, we break the power of those voices and the spirit behind it in the name of Jesus, and we command it to cease and desist in this operation, to be thou removed right now, to be thou cast in the midst of the sea, never to come again. And Father, we ask that the spirit of God, the voice of God, will come in, in its place. And now, now they will know what true peace is, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding to guard their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Father God, we give you praise, and we ask that, they, that you would give them a spirit of thanksgiving now, Jesus that you would give them of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're a good God. Work your power through them now, I ask. You're a good God. We give you praise. Thank you for your work. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Friends, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you're, 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 you're precious people in God's sight. And um, I, I want to just end the, the broadcast with three... Three scriptures, if it's okay. The first one, the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 37. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. But today you will know and see. Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. And the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. In Jesus' name. Friends, I want to invite you to learn more about me and my church ministry by logging on to my website at www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Also, I want to encourage you uh, to support the work of my church uh, ministry with a donation or even becoming a monthly partner. You can donate securely on my website, and I ask for God's blessing to be upon you and all your house for doing so in Jesus' name. Also, if you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption, you can email me directly at 
Anita at emof.org. I'll be sure to put this information uh, associated to this broadcast in YouTube and on Facebook. All right, friends, until the next broadcast, may the Lord richly bless you. And just remember, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. God bless you. Bye-bye.